Hi, my name is Jeff Schmeckhupper. I am the Senior Field Support Engineer with Odyssey Wireless Lighting Controls, a division of Ideal Industries. And today we're going to show you how to start up and configure the Odyssey system. If at any point you'd like to skip ahead to a specific section, click the links in the description below. To configure the IP on a Windows computer, first right click on the network icon and open Network and Sharing Center. This can also be accessed through the control panel. Click Change Adapter Settings, right click on your network and choose Properties. Choose Internet Protocol Version 4, TCP IP Version 4 and click Properties. Choose Use the following IP address and type 192.168.1.11. Click Subnet Mask, which should populate with 255.255.255.0 and hit OK. Now plug the Ethernet cable into the gateway. Open a web browser, Chrome is preferred. In the URL field, type in the gateway's default IP address, 192.168.1.47. And hit enter. You will be asked to sign in. The default username is admin, A D M I N, all lowercase, and the default password is test password 01, all lowercase, T E S T P A S S W O R D, the number 0, number 1. Click sign in. At the top of the screen, click settings. Now we are going to set the network parameters provided by your network administrator to enable the Odyssey gateway to connect to the network. The IP address provided by the network administrator must be a static IP address or a DHCP reservation. In this case, the IP address is 192.168.10.120. Change the IP address and other network parameters from the default to the parameters received from your IT administrator. Change the net mask if it differs from the one provided by your IT administrator. The default gateway should be given to you. Here it's 192.168.10.1. Then add the DNS addresses. Unhook the Ethernet cable from the computer and plug into the customer's network. Next, we need to set up the proxy server. Type odysseycontrols.com into a web browser and enter the email address and password provided in your Odyssey welcome email. Scroll down to find the downloadable package that you will need based on your host server. In this case, it's Windows 64-bit. Click on the download link. Once downloaded, find your file. Right-click on the file and find the Extract All button. Click Extract. Next, you'll want to create a new folder and title the folder Proxy. Drop the extracted file into the folder. Go back to the odysseycontrols.com page and click Download Client Proxy Config. Once the file is downloaded, locate the file in Finder and drag it into your proxy folder. In the proxy folder, click on the file called Odyssey Service and run the software. To add the gateway to the Odyssey Cloud Server, Go back to odysseycontrols.com and click on Setup. Give the gateway a name and type the IP address that you added for the gateway earlier. Type the gateway username and password. This is not the username used to sign into this website. The default username is admin and the password is test password 01. Select your time zone and click Add Gateway. The website is broken up in five tabs. The Setup tab is for general configuration and system setup. Lighting handles the majority of the system control. The Programs tab offers programming and scheduling. Consumption shows the amount and types of power used. And the Account tab is where users are added and deleted. To add devices into the system, first go to the Setup tab and create a room. Click Setup Room, give the room a name, and click Add Room. To add devices to the new room, click on the room name and choose Add New Device. Then, type in the serial number from the device we're going to use. The device type and name should populate. The name can be changed to something more descriptive. Then, click Save. The screen should say, Device Successfully Added. Repeat these steps until all the devices in the room have been added to the system. 
Odyssey setup can also be performed from an Android or iOS mobile device. To add a room from the iPad, tap the menu button and select Setup. Select the gateway, then tap the plus symbol to add a new room. Type in a new room name and hit OK. Add a device to this room by tapping the room and scanning the device barcode. To change the settings on Luminaire controllers, click the Edit icon. In the Edit screen, you can change the device name, voltage, amperage draw, power factor, and Luminaire type settings. This is also where you can set this particular controller as a repeater. Please note, enabling more repeaters in a system than are required for proper communication may have a negative impact on the system. Click Save to save your changes. Once a motion sensor is added, determine if the motion sensor should function in a vacancy or an occupancy mode. In vacancy mode, the lights must be turned on manually, while occupancy mode means the lights will turn on automatically when the room becomes occupied. Any motion sensors put in the room default to vacancy mode. To have the motion sensor function in occupancy mode, click the room, click the arrow next to the motion sensor you want to work in occupancy mode, and then select controllers in that room you want to turn on, then hit save. To set the light sensor, click the room and select the arrow next to the light sensor to expand. Select which lights or zones you want the light sensor to control and hit save. Once the light sensor is set up, go to the lighting tab and select the room. The little notch in the light sensor bar will indicate the room's current light level. Set a low set point by dragging the left line and a high set point by dragging the right one. Or enter specific numbers in the fields below. Click Save to update. To add a switch in the Setup tab, select the room to be configured. Then go down to the switch. In this case, it's a scene switch, so it should control all the lights. Select All. For switches that should control only one zone, just select the desired zone and click Save. A virtual switch can be used from the mobile application and the website. Setting up a virtual switch is similar to adding a regular switch. Go into Setup and click the desired room. Click Add New Device, start the serial number with FF04, and then fill out the remaining four characters as desired. Every virtual switch created will need a unique serial number. The pre-populated device name can be renamed. Then save and click back. To set up the virtual switch, select the arrow next to it to expand. Then select which zone or fixture the switch will control, just like the regular switch setup. Click save. To use the virtual switch, go to the lighting tab. Select the room to be controlled. On the right, this switch will toggle between the full room and the switches. Select the virtual switch to turn it off and on, or dim it the same way you would from a wall switch. To set up scenes, select the lighting tab and the desired room. Each room can have up to 16 scenes. There are multiple ways to set different scenes. Save the current state of a room by clicking this down arrow. For more options, click the down arrow and select Advanced Scene Editor. This shows the state of all the different fixtures in the room that can be individually adjusted. To change the settings, first hit Trigger Scene. When finished, click Save. To change the name of the scene, click the down arrow and select Rename Scene and type a new name, then click Rename. To recall the scene in the future, click on it or press the corresponding Scene button on the Scene switch. In this situation, Off is Scene 1, Presentation Mode is Scene 2, This is 3, This is 4. To set up an account, click on the Account tab. There are two different types of accounts. To add an authorized user, click the button and enter their email address. Then select which rooms they can access, one or multiple, and click Submit. An authorized user will not have access to the Setup tab or the Programs tab, so they cannot make changes to the system. To add an administrator, click on the button, type in their email address, and click Add Administrator. An administrator has access to the whole system. They can make any changes they want, including adding authorized users and administrators. 
To add a floor plan, go to the Setup tab. Select Upload under Floor Plans. PDF, JPEG, or PNG files are allowed. Choose the file and click Open. Once the floor plan is uploaded, click on it. Every room will be listed on the left. Click and drag the desired room to its location and resize it to fit the room. Now in the Lighting tab, there's an option to view the floor plan. Once in the floor plan, click directly on the room to view its settings. To control multiple rooms at once, go to the Setup tab and click Setup Room Group. Type in the name of the group, select which rooms are included, and hit Create. Now in the Lighting tab, the entire building can be controlled at once. Turn all lights on or off, or change the dim level of the whole building. The Lighting tab handles the majority of the system controls. Select a specific room to control. The lights can be turned off and on with these buttons. To dim, select any specific dim level or grab the bar and drag it to the desired dim level. This is Scene Set and Activation. Each room can have up to 16 scenes. This sets the vacancy timeout, which is how long after the motion sensor last reported movement that the lights will turn off automatically. The vacancy dim level is the level the lights should go to when the room becomes unoccupied. For example, in a hallway where the lights should not turn completely off, set a vacancy dim level for when the hallway becomes unoccupied. The occupancy dim level is similar, but it controls the level the lights go to when the room becomes occupied. If you're in occupancy mode instead of vacancy mode, this is the level that will be used. By default, it's set to 50%, but you can select any level. The light sensor is where to select low and high set points, as well as to see what the current reading of the light sensor is. On the iPad, the tabs on the left are the same tabs as on the website. Lighting, Consumption, Programs, Setup, and Account. In the Lighting tab, select the room to adjust the lights in that room. Turn them off and on. Change the vacancy timeout and change the occupancy or vacancy dim levels. You can also adjust the light sensor by entering new set points. To create a program, click the Programs tab and select Create New Program. Edit the name of the program using the Edit icon. Then expand the room group. Scheduling is available for the entire building or for individual rooms. To schedule from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., click and drag the bar. Then, click on the bar and set up the desired dim level or scenes. Click Save. If a room has a switch, it's possible to schedule that specific switch. For example, if you had a task light, schedule just that task light to turn on at a specific time. Then, click into it and select your desired settings. Once the program is set up, select which days it will apply to. Do this by selecting individual dates, or add reoccurring dates with this button. This example is a weekday program, so select the weekdays. Then pick an end date, and click Add. Now all the weekdays are highlighted. If there was a holiday, or the office was closed, click on that date to uncheck it. Then click Save again, and we'll remove that date from the schedule. Individual dates can also be removed from the screen. If Friday is a holiday, click Remove and hit Yes under Cancel Programs Date. Programs can also be extended on this screen. If people are working late on Friday, the program can be extended by typing in the desired length of time in hours and minutes. Or if people are coming in early, select Extend Start and then click Save Extension. Now the program shows plus two on Friday, meaning the lights will stay on two hours later than they normally would. To see energy consumption, click on the Consumption tab. This shows a date range which can be changed. Pick the desired date and click Update. You can view consumption by week or month as well. To see consumption for a particular area, 
click into source and choose the target room. You can view by week, day, or month. See all the areas at once by clicking on by area and the chart shows how much energy is being used in each room. Export this data to a CSV file by clicking Export CSV. This data can be used to make your own graphs and do an analysis. Thanks for watching how to configure the Odyssey interface. Contact Odyssey customer support with questions. We hope you can now see your world in a better light.